It feels my guy. Uh, just, you know, every time anybody would go to the uh, training room, he was always in there joking around. Um, I think he's definitely a, a mood, like, he brings your mood up a lot. Um, I think that's one thing he did a lot for us. How's the last six weeks been treating you since uh, the game? What have you been up to? Um, just every day is just training, you know, focused on getting better and every drill. Um, every workout, just you know, competing with guys in the room, just doing everything necessary to make sure that come tomorrow, I'm at the best I can be. Where'd you go to train? Uh, Dallas. I was at Exos. Do you think you might surprise people? Do I think I'm gonna surprise people? In what ways do you think you will? I'm definitely going in the, you know, the shuttle drills. I think I have potential to, you know, break or set a record. Um, just, you know, the times I'm going up while training, I think are going to be very high. Talk about that transition. You started out as a wide receiver and then you went as defensive back. And just that journey that you had uh, going to the offensive side of the ball to now getting some time on defense, to back to the on defense, to be having that breakout season that you put on the picks and all like those splash plays. What was that like? Was it kind of hard for you to go from offense to defense or was it just kind of like this? I would like to see second, second just be like this guy. Um, I think it happened pretty natural. Um, definitely one of the better cases in you know switching positions so late in your you know college career. Um, and you know, shout out to Coach Harbaugh because it was you know a great decision. He you know when he called me and asked me to make that you know switch. Um, he definitely saw something, and you know I believed in him. I trusted you know his vision. And, you know, the mindset I had when switching defense was, you know, I'm going to do everything I can to help this team out this defense. I'm uh, feeling the spot that was much needed with Dax Hill leaving. Um, so, you know, the transition was, it was pretty easy. Um, I went in there, I, you know, got the playbook right away. Wanted to learn as fast as possible so I could have an immediate impact. What are the charges again? Uh, a player's coach. Um, a guy who's going to do everything he can to make sure that the guys around him are succeeding. A guy who's going to love his football team. A guy who loves the program. And he's a you know, blue-collar guy who's going to work his tail off to make sure that the program wins. With coverage, obviously that's the thing that I mean, but like, it's back. You're willing to take that risk. 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 Kind of go into that mindset that you have. You've kind of been a skilled position player all your life in terms of being able to get your face to the band and get down there even more. I'm um, just a guy, you know, even though I'm not, you know, the most physically imposing looking guy. The smaller frame I have, the willingness, like you said, to be able to go down there and, you know, put my pads on somebody or, you know, get myself around the ball and, you know, however that looks. Um, that's just what I want to do. I like the physical part of the game. You know, you have pads on for a reason, so there's no point of being scared. Um, you know, you're protected. So use what you have and, you know, get down there, get physical. Is there a couple guys that you like to kind of watch that, you know, from the run game perspective as well as from coverage, whether it be inside or outside that you like to model your game out? Uh, Mike Hilton, Trent McDuffie, Buda Baker, and uh, Kenny Moore. Those are my four. Mike Hilton recently like played for the Steelers before he went to the Bengals. Have you had any conversations with the Steelers in the Uh I've, I've spoken with the Steelers. I haven't uh, spoken with the Bengals yet. Yeah, with the Steelers, was that a full game? Were you able to meet with Coach Allen at all? Yeah, I met with Coach Allen. How was that conversation with him and the rest of the staff? It was real cool, real relaxed. Uh, you know, the whole staff was very welcoming. Um, I enjoyed our conversation. I enjoyed the interview. Can, can you dive into Michigan and how that helped you be where you are right now and have this opportunity? Um, you know, Coach Harbaugh made the promise while I was being recruited that when my time at Michigan is done, I'm going to be prepared for the next level. Um, we kept that promise true, and that was through every experience on the field and off the field. And I think, you know, everybody in the program, from the staff to the players, um, definitely helped me get prepared for this moment. And, you know, time and time again, you hear it from people who have left the program that there's no other program that's going to help you get ready for the NFL like Michigan will. So, you know, I'm very appreciative of everything that, you know, I went through at Michigan. I'm appreciative of all the guys and all the staff that I was able to, you know, go through it with. What are your expectations for, for the future of Michigan, right? I mean, it's great 18 guys here now and, and a lot of coaching staff having left for the Chargers. How can you guys, Michigan, continue to, to win it down? 
that, that's not the way you guys work. I'm just having everybody, you know, in the program buy into the same goal. That's what helped us be successful last year. We were all bought into one thing. We had one track line. We all had a vision. We, we all did everything we can necessary to, you know, get to where we wanted to be. What do you make of the defensive back room coming back? A lot of guys. What was that? What do you make of the defensive back room that's coming back? Um, you know, another another year of guys who, you know, can make plays. You know, Will Johnson, uh, Kari Page, Rob Moore. Um, you know, those three there, you know, that's the that's the spearhead right now in the DB room. Um, and I know those guys are going to do a great job of getting everyone else around there prepared. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to get transfers in or not, but I know the younger guys that are in that room who had playing time last season are going to, you know, get prepared as well. So I'm excited to see what they're going to do this year. Mike, you uh, moved to DB after Mike McDonald left, but did you have any interactions with him when he was on the staff as the defensive coordinator? And how would you feel about potentially playing for him at the next level? So that means to see uh, yeah, I know Coach McDonald's a great coach. Um, just competing against his defense, the spring ball in camp, and just seeing what he was able to, you know, get those guys to do during the season. Um, I just know he's a great coach, so, you know, playing for him will be awesome. It will be an honor. Um, but, yeah, during, the, you know, his time at Michigan, I would joke around with him and, you know, the defensive coaches there saying, whenever you guys need me on defense, just let me know. I'll come over and, you know, take a few reps in game, practice, whatever it is. Have you met with I haven't met with him, but i met with the Seahawks. Have you met with the Packers? No, not for me, no. Not during this process, but I did speak to him a few times during the season and before the season. What does he mean to me? Um, just from a leadership standpoint, he gave me a few, you know, tips on how to hold guys accountable. Um, and just, you know, the legacy he left at Michigan is one to, you know, you want to live up to that legacy. You know, he was a great DB. He was a great two-way guy. Um, someone that, you know, what I do, I, you know, I can say I model, I model what he did. Um, I didn't get the chance to, you know, go back and play offense how he did. Probably, you know, if I did, I would have been in the same conversation as him. But just, you know, a guy like him, um, he means a lot to the program. He means a lot to the people with the athletic ability that I have. Can you guys, how would you describe your play style as um, just very instinctual, um, like I said earlier, just being somebody who knows how to find the football, whether it's in the air, on the ground. Um, I'm just, I would say, very instinctual. Is that something you had to pick up on quickly with making that transition from receiver? No, nah, I think I had to stop myself from trying to find the ball too much in terms of in coverage. Um, and I'm still continuing to work on eye discipline. but. I think my instincts and my natural ability to, you know, be around the football is what helps me play how I play at the nickel position, especially. Have you met with Pittsburgh here in Indy? Yes. Uh, was that former? Former. Mike Tomlin, did you get to meet with him at all? Yeah. And what's, what was your impression of him? I see you smiling there. I like him a lot. He's a he's a great guy, um, great coach. I used to be, I was I was a big Steelers fan when I was younger. San Antonio Holmes, Antonio Brown. Um, I used to, you know, love watching those guys at receiver. Um, and on the defense side, you know, Troy Palomalu. Just seeing what they did, um, and then when they, you know, won the Super Bowl, of course. But uh, you know that team. Um, I, I used to love the Steelers, but I grew up a Patriots fan. I'm from I'm from Boston, so. But yeah, you know, Coach Tomlin, that staff, great staff. As you guys mentioned, San Antonio Holmes, you got to be. That's a Buckeye. You got to be careful with that, bro. Listen, <laughs> good football is good football. At the end of the day. <laughs> when you guys would go uh, ones versus ones in practice, how would you try to knock JJ off his game? Switching leverage, um, not letting him see, you know, disguising certain things. But, you know, one-on-ones is one-on-ones at the end of the day. It's, it's easier to do that. I was saying seven-on-sevens in team rank. How would you – I mean, he's, he could be kind of a risk taker sometimes. When you when you guys were going against him, how much is that playing to the mindset of trying to make a play? Just knowing that you have to cover for the full length of a play. Um, I think J.J. being a risk taker is what makes him who he is. Um, and Coach Harbaugh – you know, he said, you know, JJ, what you do is what you do. I'm not going to take that away from you. That's what allows you to be great. So I think JJ just keeps doing that. Um, and that's why, you know, he's going to continue getting better at the little things. But, you know, that risk taking factor that he has is very special. It's very unique. Mike, what's something about who you are as a person or as a player that doesn't show up on the film that you're trying to get across to NFL teams? Just being a guy, you know, I, I think everything I do does show up on film from you know, a guy who's accountable, a guy who shows leadership, um, a good communicator. I think you know, those, those things right there show up themselves. And then you know, the intangibles, um, like you know, I'm, I'm responsible. 
Um, you know, you see that because I was a two-time captain. Um, but, you know, I think I have a very good resume. Um, I think I have a clean slate. And, you know, I'll be, I'll be very appreciative of whoever gives me an opportunity. And I'm excited. Um, and from a business standpoint, you know, I'm a guy, you know, I create content. I did a lot of that at Michigan, just showing the perspective of a player and showing the team culture that we had. So, you know, just being able, you know, for a guy that I could help bring good business into a program or, you know, to a, uh, you know, whatever team I go to. So all those type of things. How did you Mike, approach you the to... challenge of being a team captain? How did, you, did you work at leadership and that kind of things? How, how, did, you, how did you tackle that? Um, just, you know, being myself and, you know, listening to my coaches, taking the coaching, listening to players, understanding what each individual needed. Not everyone is, you know, you can't treat everybody the same way. Every person needs something different. So you have to cater to people differently. And I think, you know, the biggest challenge for me was the younger guys, getting them on the same page as the older guys and, you know, meeting that same standard because, you know, they're the ones that come in not really used to college football, not used to what the program's been. So getting them on the same page as us so, you know, the machine can run as well as it can, um, you know, and I appreciate everybody around me that helped me lead and allowed me to be myself. On that note, is there a younger DB that's caught your eye in Michigan? You said what? Is there a younger DB in Michigan that's caught your eye? I think all of the young DBs, you know, DJ Waller, Jair Hill, um, those two guys are guys I think are going to have a, you know, impact this year, and I'm excited, you know, to see what they do. Mike, have you had a chance to meet with the Houston Texans here at the combine? The Texans? The Texans. Um, no, not formal. No. Mike, you is. Um, I think, you know, our defense is very unpredictable. We give a lot of different looks. You know, man might look like zone. Zone might look like man. Um, a lot of disguises, you know, we send pressure from all over the field, you know, and that was shown in the Alabama game. Um, we just, you know, Coach Minter did a great job with just, like I said, just in different situations, not allowing us to be, you know, predicted. Um, and I think that, you know, our success rate with what he did was very high because of those reasons. Mike, you faced two of the best receiving cores in college football last year in Ohio State and Washington. What sort of challenges did they present to you and how were you able to, how did that prepare you for going into the NFL, facing the NFL receivers? Um, Ohio State, they did a good job schematically. You know, they gave us a bunch of different looks, but it ended up being the same thing. Just, you know, we got, they got to different concepts and different formations, different personnel. And, you know, Washington with the shifts, the motions, um, trades, bunches, they just did a lot of stuff from a schematic standpoint that hit a lot of concepts. But, you know, at the end of the day, everything gets to the same place, same spots on the field. Just it's presented to you in a different way. So well, how we learned in the DB room was same as. That was a lot of, you know, that was our terminology. A lot of things are the same, just shown to you differently. A lot of people compare your game to Mike Hill. Is he kind of a player that you watch or are there other players that you might have to you know, bigger kind of spot? Yeah, I, uh, I I did a lot of Mike Hill and study tape this past offseason. Um, I had a few conversations with him as well, and I asked him, what does he do that helps him, you know, disguise his blitzes and allows him to get there and, you know, his timing and everything. He gave me a few tips on that. But, you know, Mike Hilton was definitely one of the people that I spoke where, where to. Where you to, you know? Instagram. What's the, what's, what is the art of disguising the blitz? Just, you know, learning the cadence, knowing what your indicators are, and, you know, you have to watch on film to see how much time is on the clock when the offense is snapping the ball, you know, knowing those type of things and just being ready and, you know, knowing the situations like, all right, if it's four down, game on the line like we had Alabama or overtime, um, knowing in the red zone, I'm not going to disguise this bus I'm sure right now. Or if it's earlier in the game, I'm going to disguise this bus. I'm not going to show him if I'm inside leverage. Or if I'm outside levers, I might line up head up just so he thinks I'm in, you know, true man coverage and I'm coming from the pressure right there. And then also your safeties have to not tip you when, you know, when you're disguising the blitz. Thank hey, you. Mike, I'm a four-star athlete from Michigan. Uh, this past season, I played DB. I, I was a receiver before that. I know you played receiver and switched to DB when you went to college. What, like, what helped you be a better, like, switch to DB and be a better DB when you went to college? Um, I'll say learn the playbook first. You know, you're not, you're never going to be, 
no matter what it is you do, if you're not, if you don't know your plays, you're not going to play. So you'll never even be able to showcase that, you know, defensive back talent. Um, and then, you know, take the coaching is different. It's not the same as a receiver. The ball is not being thrown to you. So when you're coming out your breaks, you got to, you know, take two steps to the man first and then understand that you can't get frustrated. You might give up a few plays. People might make a contested catch on you, but how quick can you shift your focus from, all right, I just gave up a play. I got to play the next play. Mike, why do you think you landed at the nickel corner position? Why do you think that's kind of been your MO, especially in this draft cycle? Um, I, you know, I think just showing my physicality, showing my willingness, um, whether it's in the you know, run game or defeating blocks on the edge, uh, playing with good instincts, I think, you know, those are the things that helped me be successful at the nickel position and, you know, why Coach Harbaugh wanted me to play in the corner, as well as being a smaller frame guy. The nickel, I, I wouldn't say is for smaller guys, but it just, it works out for me that way, so. Have you met with the Jaguars yet? In, uh, actually, yes, I did actually. Yeah. Uh, formally. Formally. Yeah. How did that meeting go? It went well. Yeah. I enjoy, yeah, I enjoyed my meeting with that staff. Did you know anything about Ryan Nielsen before you sat down? No, I did not. I know about Denard Robinson though. <laughs> hey, Mike, I want to talk a little bit about your Haitian culture. I know that that's a, a strong part of who you are. What type of attributes do you feel like that that has given you to be where you are right now? Um, natural strength. There we go. Uh, you know the foods we eat. Um, I think it just you know gives you a lot of natural strength. I'm not sure why. I think Haitians are cut from a different cloth. I think we're just wired differently. Um, so you know, shout out to my Zoe culture. There you what's go. Your, that's, that's the secret weapon, huh? That's the secret weapon. What's your What's your favorite Haitian food? Haitian dish? There's a lot. Yeah. I, I can't really give you a specific. It's just so much so much good food. You can't really choose. Yeah. Last question. Last question right here. Okay. Right here. Based off my defense or my defensive knowledge, um, you know, I think just knowing the fact that, like, you know, I've been a sponge to, you know, I've been very open to learning. Um, so, you know, when I switched to defense, I was in the, you know, film room the next day learning our defense. So, asking questions, you know, to the coaches, to the players, um, you know, note taking, all those things, just expanding my knowledge every single day. Makes, makes it very easy to, you know, go up there and do board work. And then, you know, from a, a playing standpoint, having an offensive background, it makes it so much easier for me to determine what I'm going to get in certain situations. Um, you know, locating receiver splits, down and distance, all of those things help play factors into, you know, my knowledge to the game. Thanks, Mike.